Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey everyone, it's Spencer here. Welcome back to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Uh, Today is another coaching call for the Niche Site Project 3. This is a coaching call between Perrin and Colleen. This is their first coaching call. And in this one, you're going to hear Perrin dive into some market research strategies. He kind of skips the uh, brainstorming step of you know deciding what niche to go into and, and jumps right into market research. And so with that, uh, he has some interesting strategies. Of course, a lot of the same strategies that I've used for a long time that uh, he dives into and starts with you know, first off. And so it's a great call. Unfortunately, I will warn you that the audio isn't that great, uh, especially for Colleen. You can't really hear her um, in very much of it. So I do apologize for that. We'll work on getting the audio a little bit better for the next call, but the content is great. You can hear Perrin. And so I think it's worth a listen to go ahead and hear uh, some of the strategies that Perrin likes to start off with. And of course, this first coaching call between the two of them. So enjoy. Hey, everybody. This is Perrin from nichepursuits.com. And this is the inaugural Niche Site Project 3 coaching call for myself and my student, Miss Colleen Kinsey. Um, So I wanted to welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in, especially if you are an applicant yourself. And I wanted to welcome you, Colleen. How's it going? How are you, Karen? Pretty good. Thank you very much. First, um, I wanted to get to know you because I read your application. I've chatted with you on Skype, seen your videos. We're even Facebook friends now. So I kind of feel like I know Colleen, but for people who are going to be following along with the project, tell us a little bit about who the real Colleen Kinsey is. So essentially, Perrin has been stalking me, but for everyone else... (laughs) not stalking me. Um, My name is Colleen Kinsey and I live in Kansas City, Missouri and I travel for work but I'm Mm -hmm. currently looking for new opportunities and to get out of my comfort zone. Um, I do like traveling but I mostly like traveling for fun because everyone loves taking vacations. Um, One of the cool things that I've done this past year is I took an entire three-week backpacking trip for free all on just points, vacation points. So that's one of the things that I've done that's pretty cool. Um, I really enjoy hanging out with my friends and uh, drinking, eating, and traveling. I also like to read and practice yoga. I also like cats because I'm a crazy cat lady. Mm-hmm. And I like trying new things. What are you reading? Top, top book you're reading right now. Um, so my favorite book that I just finished is called Shantaram. Cool. It's amazing. It's about a guy that escapes from prison in Australia and moves to India. That's so cool. And that's actually one of the reasons we picked you or I picked you is because you have so many hobbies. Like you honestly just do so much stuff and I felt like it'd be really easy for you to get into something else. So I think it's super cool. Um, tell us a little bit about why you decided to apply for niche site project three in the first place. Well, I have been kind of a lurker, and I watched mm-hmm. the, your project, Perrin, which was why I'm really excited that I'm your student mm-hmm. specifically. But um, I really like the idea of being able to be my own boss and um, be able to choose what I'm interested in and be able to do that instead of working for a large corporation and having them tell me what to do or making someone else happy, I can work for myself. So I think that that's something that would be really awesome. That's a dream, right? Get out of the rat race. That's exactly where I was coming from a couple years ago. So I think we're kindred spirits in that way. Um, Tell me your goals. I know that we've kind of talked about this in the announcements for niche site projects and I have my own ideas, but for you, what do you hope to get out of this um, at the end? And I know you want to be your own boss and travel around and all that sort of stuff, but like tangible stuff, what do you hope to uh, have at the end of six months or 12 months or however long we end up doing this thing? Yeah, so I think that um, in six months, one of my goals would be for the website that we come up with is to be able to make a profit from it. So more than what I put into it, plus some, and also to be able to 
potentially help other people do SEO. So maybe I could not become an expert, but become much better than I am now. So I think that that would be cool. Sure. Do you have a monetary goal in mind for this website? Um, well, I know that not to copy you, but I know that yours for your project was 500 a month. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that would be an awesome goal, but, um, I'm open to what you think would be a good baseline. Cool. Yeah. With that big goal in mind though, I do want to reality check you. Okay. Because I wish someone had reality checked me when I was first really getting into this and first starting to, to learn it. Um, because while SEO can be easy and while making a couple hundred dollars a month can be easy, I feel like the way we are going to do it is going to be hard. Okay. So that's reality check. Number one, reality check. Number two is that this ain't going to be easy. All right. I think a lot of people go into this with the mindset of like earning some side income or outsourcing everything. Lots of times people have read the four hour work week. I know you've read the four hour work week and the, and the principle behind that type of book is to outsource absolutely everything so that you don't have to work much. And it's totally possible to create a site that replaces your income and then you don't have to work much. And that's awesome. And we're, and we're going to try to do that. But to do that does not mean you don't have to work on your own site in the first place. In fact, I view SEO as a way to front load all of your work. For example, the site that I run now, um, I've probably put about 500 hours in this year, most of those in January, February, March. So I want to prepare you, first of all, uh, and tell you that it really is not going to be easy, mostly because we don't have a budget. So it it definitely is possible to do this without working much if you can pay an editor, pay an SEO agency to go build links for you, pay somebody to edit and post your content, and all you have to do is research some keywords and outsource it, and it's done. We don't have that luxury. So all the teams in this competition are going to be trying to use a $500 budget. With $500... Building something that total, totally replaces your income is not easy. It's going to require quite a bit of writing, especially writing, and it's going to require some hours putting in or put into marketing and stuff. So really, I don't want to scare you, but I definitely want to prepare you for the work that is ahead, especially in the next two or three months, because those are going to be the most intense. So I hope you're up for it. Yeah, I'm going to have to throw in the towel right now. <laughs> not even 10 minutes in, I'm going to have to quit. <laughs> Good, yeah. I'll just uh, hop on and help coach me. Just kidding, I'm in. <laughs> Good. So, um, I don't want to dilly-dally. And basically, I, th- I, I feel like I don't want to waste time brainstorming or shooting the breeze. I really wanted to spend the first call getting into market research and show you how to start collecting data so that when we... Come around next week, even if it's after Christmas, um, we'll be one big step forward to actually creating a blog and starting to make money. Um, Because if we can get, you know, a few dollars rolling in the door by like the end of March or April, we're going to be well on our way to creating something pretty big. So I really don't want to brainstorm and I'm not even going to talk about keywords on this first call. I want to jump right into market research and hopefully try to leapfrog Spencer and Jake a little bit. Cool? Very cool. Awesome. So this really is set up as kind of a presentation, um, but I don't want to talk at you the whole time. So please feel free whenever you think of any question, just stop me, jump in and uh, ask me whatever questions you have. All right. You got it. Okay. So week one and guys, I apologize. I'm sick or I, I've been sick this week. So I have a loss and I'm going to be probably coughing a little bit, but week one is finding a market. Um, I think this is going to be one of the differences in our approach as opposed to Team Jake and Team Spencer. Usually, especially for um, guys like Spencer, the strategy is to look at a bunch of keywords, brainstorm a bunch of seed keywords, find a gym and try to build a site around that. I like to find markets before I find uh, keywords. Why is that? Um, First, 
I really think SEO and internet marketing is way more fun if you are doing something or writing about something that you enjoy or that you think you could enjoy that you want to get into. So researching a market is a better way to find what you want to do and work around that concept and to build a site in that space instead of letting keywords dictate what you want to do. So like, you know, maybe you find a keyword on USB microphones, but you hate podcasting or you don't want to just write a site about audio equipment because it sounds boring. I think it's a better approach to find something that you like or to find five optional markets that you really like and to build a site in those markets based on good research. So first, it's easier to find something that that you want to write about. Um, Also, looking at markets before keywords, I think is a better way to prove the concept of the site. Because most of the time, what we're going to be doing and and what I'm going to show you to do later in this call, um, what you're looking at is sites that are already successful in that space. And if you can't find sites that are already successful in that space, it's usually a good sign that it's not a great market to get into. So if you do really good market research in a market, it's a better proof of concept. And I think your odds of su- odds of success are a lot higher than if you're just doing keyword research and basing a site on that. Um, third, it'll give you a really good idea of like the rough benchmarks. So you'll be able to see a whole bunch of people who are having success and how their traffic curve looks against their authority. So you'll be able to see at what point can I expect to get what traffic, which is really useful for the growth of your site and it helps you diagnose problems. So that's a reason I like to find markets first. And lastly, in my experience, you can find pretty good keywords in just about any market. Um, So whatever market you end up choosing, there are going to be good keywords in there. Um, You just have to work a little bit to find them. So I think keywords are the lesser problem. Finding a really great market uh, is, is the bigger problem. And so I think it's worth tackling first. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so this is kind of the opposite of looking at a keyword and then researching the domain authority and everything. So are you saying we're not going to worry about a site's domain authority? We are going to worry about the domain authority, but instead of looking up a keyword and finding like the average page authority and the domain authority and all that other good stuff first, instead we're going to be looking at the domain authority of potential competitors and seeing how they're doing. And I'm going to talk uh, more about that in a bit. But yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily opposite. I just think it's in a different order. Okay, cool. Okay, so how do you find good markets? Before we really dive into it, I want to keep a few things in mind because you need these to do correct market research, at least in this way. So first, we're going to be focusing on SEO. And... We're doing that mostly because that's what I know how to do, and that's what I'm comfortable with teaching. Um, but it's going to inform our market research, right? So market research for like a social viral site is going to be much different than it is for an, a, a site that's relying on organic traffic. So when we're doing our market research, we're going to have to do it based on the assumption that we're going to be trying to rank for keywords in Google and getting traffic that way. Secondly... Our resources are limited, right? So when we're doing a market research, we want to keep in mind that we're trying to create something on a $500 budget, and we're not going to be able to compete with people who obviously have much bigger budgets, and that's going to inform our market research. Third, we want to find opportunities with short-term gains that have long-term potential. So whatever project we end up starting, we want to get it off the ground quickly, and we want it to start earning money as soon as possible, but we want it to have a really high ceiling, right? Because that's how you create something that can replace or even you know double triple your income. And lastly, uh, at least to start, we will be focusing on Amazon. And that, again, is just because what I know best, and I think it's the easiest place to start, and it's what I feel comfortable teaching, but... We will be using it on our site, so when we do market research, we want to find opportunities in that type of environment, if that makes sense. Yeah, so my market that I'm looking for needs to have something I can have an affiliate product on. Does that sound right? Yep, 
And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. But for Amazon, you want something where there are physical opportunities. Um, and you can build a site around anything, and you can be an affiliate for lots of different types of products. I think on ClickBank, one of the highest rated products in the home and garden niche is just like how to build a shed or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So there are non-physical products out there for anything, but we definitely want to look for a market in which there are products on Amazon that we can recommend. All right, so step one. This is... This is for market research, and there are like two steps in this whole process. Um, but step one, and this is probably the most important revelation I've had in the last two years of SEO, um, is and, and this is really the cornerstone of how I do all market research now, is to find lots of low authority competitors with high organic traffic. Um, do you have any guesses why that would be a good thing to look for? Because you want a lot of people to go to your site and not having to compete with a lot of other, other websites? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, really close. And it, it's not really um, having to compete against people. The idea here is that low authority sites um, don't really or haven't really put in much marketing work, right? So if you can find a site that has low authority, which means really just fewer links, and it has high organic traffic, it means it's easier to replicate. So it means you can get that same traffic for less marketing work. Does that make sense? Yep. So what's this accomplish? First of all, it shows us that sites can do well with limited resources, which is super important for us because we only have $500 to make this work, right? Secondly, it shows us that SEO works in that market. Sometimes SEO is really tough. Um, it's one of the things we learned with our authority site at Niche Pursuits. We try to get into the education space, and we learned that SEO was really, really tough in that market, even though it looked pretty easy on paper. So if we find low authority sites with high traffic, we know that SEO works really well in that market. Also, most importantly, I think, it will yield hundreds of keywords that you may never have thought of. So I did a tutorial with SEMrush a while back. That's one of the tools we're going to be using. And I did some keyword research, and I found a bunch of weird keywords that were like industry jargon. I just would have never thought of those. And so by finding a market and looking at competitors first, I think you can get access to lots of other keywords that are already proven in that niche without having to necessarily brainstorm them. So that's what finding sites with low authority and high traffic accomplishes, but obviously we want to know how to do it, right? So I'm just going to kind of show you how I like to do it. First of all, you have to install Mozbar. I know a lot of our readers may already have Mozbar, but if you are a beginner, you might not have Mozbar. Colleen, do you know what Mozbar is? I don't. Okay. I'm so Mozbar is basically an add-on that you can download from Moz. Looks like this. It's uh, moz.com backslash tools backslash SEO hyphen toolbar. And, and you can just download it. Basically what it does is it, is it uh, installs an extension where you can click a button up here and you can see the domain authority and page authority for any page you're on. So it's a way for us to check the domain authority for whatever website we're looking at quickly. And it also we'll show you the domain authority and page authority for every result in the SERPs. So that's the first thing we need to do. You wanna use the domain authority as your metric for general authority, just because it's the best measure we have. It used to be page rank, and there are other factor, or there are other things you can use, like maybe um, trust flow, citation flow, or Ahrefs domain rank. Domain authority generally is the best measure of authority. For our purposes, we want to look for blogs below 20. That's like the amazingly sweet spot. Really below 30, though, is probably okay because we can achieve that in a year. We can, we can do enough marketing to have a domain authority of 20 or 30 in a year. And I know it's kind of confusing to understand domain authority, having not been in the SEO game for a long time. Um, and I know the scale can be kind of weird. But in general, you can just use those numbers as a benchmark. Something in the, 
in the 20s or below um, is what we're looking for. So we want to look for a bunch of blogs in those in whatever ideas from markets we have. So I'll show you an example of how I like to do this. I don't know if I have a slide on this or I'm getting mixed up or what, but um, let's take hunting as an example. I always like to use a hunting example because you can't sell guns on Amazon, so there's less of a risk of people like going out and copying all this research. But um, say I wanted to start a hunting blog. I know it's a pretty big market. I know there's probably a lot of money to be made. How do I go about finding these low authority blogs with high traffic? One way is to find lists of blogs. So here you can see I typed in top hunting blogs and I could click this and it would take me to a list of 25 hunting blogs and I could just go open all those windows and check the domain authority, right? So that's one way. The other thing I like to do is start Googling keywords that I think I might want to rank for. So in this case, I'm Googling best hunting rifle. And if I scroll down, I can just check the DA of everything in the SERPs and see if there's anything that's kind of low. So DA35 is kind of low. If um, I was looking at this for myself, I'd say, you know, I'm a fairly experienced marketer, maybe I can achieve a DA35 in a year. It would take a little bit of elbow grease, but I could probably do it. Maybe I can look at sites in this range, right? Um, and I would scroll down and I would see if there's anything that piques my interest, any blog that looks like it is a low authority blog and it's showing up well in the SERPs. And you can Google all types of keywords for this. So best hunting rifle is the keyword formula we like to use in niche pursuits, that best product. But you, you could also Google like hunting tips or how to build a blind or whatever it is and find all kinds of blogs that way, right? Does that make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Then... And usually if, when I'm doing market research and I'm thinking about different markets, I want to find five. If I can't find five low DA blogs with high traffic, I usually move on. Um, but I'm mostly looking for five. Then I'll take those five blogs and I'll plug, I'll plug them into SEM Rush. Um, SEM Rush for you, Colleen, and for anybody who doesn't know, is a tool where you can analyze data from any website. Of course, they don't have access to the analytics, so mostly it's just a guess and it's scraping Google or using the Google API. I'm not sure, but you can see rough estimates for traffic. You can see how many keywords are showing up in the search results for, you can see estimates for which keywords are bringing up the most traffic or bringing in the most traffic. So it's a really good tool to get a good idea for how a site is doing. Of course you can pay for it and I do use a paid version, but for the purposes of market research, it's totally okay to use a free version, even though there are, I think limited searches. Um, so Say so you find five uh, five blogs, you plug them into SEM Rush, and you look for blogs that have over twenty thousand traffic. Um, but in the examples I'm going to show you, like around ten thousand is totally fine too. And you want to um, find blogs that are showing up in the search results for ten thousand or more positions. Now these aren't hard and fast rules. These are just what I like to see. These are what I get excited about. When I was doing market research for my current blog, I found a few really low DA sites, sites that hadn't done hardly any marketing at all, that had traffic numbers over 20,000. That got me super excited. Does that kind of make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any questions? Um, no, I was actually going to ask about the SEM rush because I use the free version now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Be stingy on that 500. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Where do you find them? Oh, yeah. So we've talked about a few of these. You can just Google keywords. You can look in the SERPs. Um, you can also try blog directories. So all top and DMOS are really great places to look. Um, they're also a really good idea or a really good place to judge market size. So if you look in the hunting section of DMOZ or all top, and there are hundreds of blogs, you know that the market's usually a little bit bigger. Um, and then you can just click through all the blogs and try to find low DA blogs that way. And when you find a blog with a low domain authority, you can then plug it into SEM Rush on your hunt for these five golden blogs um, that will tell you if the market's good or not. So in other words, you want to look for markets with lots of beatable 
competitors who have proven success. And there are other intangible things I like to look for here too. So if I see a bunch of blogs that have bad design or bad content and they're showing up for lots of keywords and bringing in lots of traffic and they haven't done any marketing, I'd be super excited about that because you know you can beat that, right? So low DA blogs, high traffic, and if they look really beatable, that's even better. So when you say they have low marketing, does that mean their number of backlinks? Yeah, that's basically what I'm um, using to judge marketing. So, of course, someone could be doing lots of paid traffic, but you could see that on SEM Rush. Um, and someone could have huge social accounts. So, if you're really worried about it, you could just go look at their Facebook page or their Pinterest accounts or whatever. But in general, you can use DA to judge how much marketing of the type that really matters to us as SEOs they have done. That makes sense? Yep. Cool. Okay, so a tip for this. These blogs will be much easier to find in big markets. Neil Patel famously said um, in a blog post this year, because he's doing a project where he's trying to get to $100,000 a month or something, Neil Patel said that it's that the bigger a market the market cap is the easier it is to make money uh, and i've certainly found that to be true myself excuse me so um when you're looking for these low da blogs with high traffic you really probably aren't going to find them in like the niche marine biology educational scientific paper space you know what i'm saying they're going to be in huge areas like hunting golf fitness fishing whatever it is you'll know the big markets when you see them and that's usually a good place to start and you really shouldn't be scared by that either because in a big market there are usually thousands of things to write about and there are many people writing about lots of different stuff and you can always target sub niches. So if you wanted to go into fishing, you could target like ice fishing or trout fishing or you could review certain types of gear or you could do like fly fishing, fly fishing spots, whatever it is. You can always pick sub niches and you shouldn't be afraid of these um, of, of big players if it's a big market. So the number one tip for you, Colleen, as you go out and try to find these low DA blogs with high traffic is to look at big markets and to not be afraid of big markets because it's usually easier to build a, a very high traffic blog. And most of the time, in my experience, although I'm not super experienced in this area anyway, it's easier to sell stuff. Cool. Also, when you're looking at markets, you want to kind of give them some bonus points to certain types of blogs, right? Or certain types of markets. In general, the best markets will have a wide range of blogs doing well. So it might be like a how-to blog, a DIY blog, a gear review blog. If you see lots of types of market or lots of types of blogs doing well, it's a very good sign. And for our purposes, you want them to have a wide range of physical products. And ideally, there'll be both physical and digital products because that'll open you up to lots of different opportunities to you, for you to promote and sell them. But certainly, you want to be in a market with lots of physical products because that's what we are going to try to promote first. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so here's how I like to record the data. Um, and you know what? Let me just go through a few examples. Um, so let's use a hunting niche as an example. And I'm going to go, I think, maybe from worst to best, but still uh, good blogs that I think I would model. So the first one I found when I was looking at this niche and doing some research is this blog, grandviewoutdoors.com. The DA here is 35. That is not an easy DA to achieve. Um, you know, like I've been marketing my blog for a year and it's a DA 26 and the DA scale is exponential. So it takes as many links to go from DA 20 to 30 as it does from zero to 20. So it gets harder as you go up. 35 is not an easy number, but 
It's something that is within that achievable range. And it's also not a high enough authority where the website is going to just be ranking for everything by default, right? So I plug it into SEM Rush and I see these crazy numbers. So up here we see the traffic is, uh, what is this now? 73,000. And this is daily traffic, by the way. So if you go to one month, you can see the daily traffic. Uh, it is true that SEM Rush drastically over reports traffic, especially at higher traffic numbers. So this 73,000, I would probably estimate they're getting like five or 10,000 visits a day. Still quite a bit, right? What I really like, though, and why I felt it was okay to use this example of a DA35 blog is that even a year ago, they were in this like 10 to 20,000 visitor range, and they certainly weren't at a DA35 then. You know what I'm saying? Right, so they just recently got bigger. Yeah, and... and they have a pretty good curve over time. This spike tells me that they probably either added a lot of content or did a bunch of marketing. But as they were growing in this sort of like slow and steady, slow and steady growth pattern, it's fair to estimate that they were lower than a DA35 here and they were still getting quite a few visitors. So I really like this. And you can see that um, organic research, which is the positions, the keyword positions, they're just ranking for tons of stuff. So here it's like 62,000 something, which is super good. Um, here's another example, Big Game Logic. This is getting into the realm of the stuff that I really like to see. DA24, we can certainly do that in a year. Um, it's They've also got some articles that seem really easy to replicate. Understanding deer tracks. Um, grunt tactics for whitetails, if you want to have like a YouTube channel or upload some audio or whatever. Maybe you'd be good at that. I don't know. Plug them in SEM Rush, and they have 10,000 visits a day. So I would estimate between 1,500 and 2,500 visits a day based on these numbers. They're ranking for 15.8 thousand positions, uh, which is super good. So this tells me that blogs of this size can do really well in this space if they're writing about this type of thing. Also, by the way, it gives us a bunch of keywords to steal. We're going to be talking about that later, but you can see that we could write about deer skeletons, hunting terms, where to shoot a deer, deer tracks. All of these keywords are bringing in lots of traffic for the site. As a third example, I found this one, Air Rifle Hunter. This is a DA-21, so relatively easy. You don't need many links at all to get to a DA-20 or 21. Plug that into SEM Rush, and this guy also has about 10,000 visitors a day. So probably, realistically, 1,500 to 2,500 visitors a day, which is really great. And what I really like about this one is that he's ranking for product terms. Best pellet gun, best air rifle, best air rifle scope. These are all things that you could sell on Amazon. I'm really not sure what the laws are. I'm probably hard to sell air rifles on Amazon. Um, but... If you were ranking for those terms, you could certainly make money off of them, right? So, looking at this niche, if I was going to put it all together, I would say that if you get to a DA35 like we have here, and you're targeting the right keywords, the traffic potential is really pretty high. If you're in the DA25 range or the DA20 range and you're targeting the right keywords, the traffic potential is still really great. If you're doing good keyword research, writing good content, doing a little bit of marketing, we can expect 1,000 visitors a day, no problem, which is really good for us, right? Mm -hmm. Not to mention, we have already have we already have people here who we can poach keywords from. And, and that doesn't mean we're going to steal content or compete with them directly. It just means we are going to be writing similar content about the same types of things and hopefully making ours even better. Is this starting to make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any questions? No, I think it's funny that you chose um, hunting, though. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Just because I don't think I've ever gone hunting in my life. I haven't either. 
I've only I did once and I fall asleep. Yeah, I I'm I'm like totally terrified of hunting. I like I just know I get a, like a bow in my butt or something or an arrow. So I I don't think I'll ever do it, but it's a huge niche, right? And also a tip would be um look for passions. Those are really uh those are usually really great markets. So like, um, anything someone cares about as a lifestyle. So like fishing would probably be a good one. People identify themselves as fishers and the markets where people have a strong personal identification to that thing are usually huge markets. And there's usually lots of blogs. And I guess a last tip for this, and we have a few more steps here, but, a, but a last tip would be, um, to look for markets in which there are tons of bloggers because the more friends you can make and the more bloggers you can make meet the easier your marketing is going to be i didn't put that in the presentation but it's very important it'll make your life really easy so uh usually i like to just create a simple spreadsheet for this data this is one i created in google drive i'm going to share it with you so you can fill it out um but I just have five sections for five potential markets. You don't have to do hunting. You can probably plug in your own unless you want to check up hunting. I don't know. Um, then you want to find five blogs that have low DA and high traffic. Um, and we'll call those model blogs. I don't know what to call them. Then you just record the DA. Their daily traffic and SEM rush, how many positions they show up for, and then the content type. Because we want to make sure that... Um, it's not only, say, DIY blogs ranking in these niches. We want to find lots of different types of content because that'll create the best site. So the ideal situation would be five blogs in the low 20s, low DA 20s or below, that have really great traffic in a wide range of topics. So tips, how-to, product reviews, maybe even e-commerce, who knows? Um, because if you put all that stuff together, you can create a really killer site. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Cool. Sounds like the site of my homework. Yeah, we're getting to it. <laughs> okay. So step two, we already kind of covered this. We might be able to just breeze through this section, but you want to make sure there are lots of products to write about. Why is that? First of all, we know on our site, we're going to be writing about products at least a little bit. Um, for my current sites, writing about products usually is only like a fifth of the content. And as the site grows, it becomes less and less a part of it. But for the start, to get money rolling in the door, we are going to have to write about products. That's how you make money with Amazon Associates. So we want to pick niches in which there are tons of products. Um, th this is the core of Amazon Associates. It's just uh, how it works. It can also be really fun. So like, if you pick a niche that becomes a new hobby, it's going to be fun for you to buy some of the stuff, test it out, maybe even return it, write a review, take some pictures, that sort of thing. Um, but it's the core of Amazon, Amazon Associates. Also, with physical products... There are lots of other opportunities. So Amazon FBA, Spencer does that a lot, and we've built a site around that, and it's highly profitable. Or even e-commerce. So if you set up an actual store selling stuff in the future, you want those opportunities available to you when you start to get to the point where you can scale your site. So um, pardon my ignorance, but what is FBA? Amazon FBA, <coughs> excuse me, is fulfillment by Amazon. So if you read some of the studies on niche pursuits, they're actually really impressive. Spencer does all this. I really don't do it. But the idea is you purchase products from manufacturers, usually overseas, but not always. Then you ship them to Amazon's warehouse. You list them on the Amazon website. And then you, uh, or then Amazon will sh ship them directly to your customers. Which really is a great compliment to an Amazon associate's site because you're already recommending products on Amazon, but if you push people to your own products instead of other people's products, instead of making 
two dollars and fifty cents for every time someone buys it, you might make thirty bucks. So it can really send the profits through the roof. Of course, there's more stuff involved. You have to buy the products beforehand, which costs a couple thousand bucks or whatever it is for that product. You have to deal with logistics and shipping. So there's other stuff involved, um, but it can work really well, especially if you already have a working Amazon Amazon associate site. And e-commerce is just like drop shipping where you find a manufacturer, sell their products as a retailer, and then they ship it to your customers. But um, those are just opportunities that you want to have in the future. You know what I'm saying? Right. So opportunity for growth. Opportunity for growth. Finding a market that will give you those opportunities is the main point probably. Okay. So how do you do it? Basically, you want to look for blogs like the Air Rifle blog we just looked at. You want to find blogs that are targeting keywords or ranking for keywords with buying intent. Keywords that have reviews in them, keywords that have keywords that have the word versus in them, or keywords that have the word best in them. You want to stay away from keywords like or footprints like buy or cheap or discount because you're going to come across stores. You want blogs that don't have stores but rank for some of these other review type buying intent words. If you follow along with our case study, you know the one that works best for us is best. But I've had lots of success with these versus keywords and I've had lots of success with review keywords. So when you're looking for these low DA blogs with high traffic, you want to try to find at least a couple who are ranking for these types of keywords. And, and you can find that really by just Googling those types of keywords in that market, seeing if you can find a low DA blog who's doing well. Um, and you can also just browse the big marketplaces. So say you don't find a low DA blog with high traffic that's ranking for these types of keywords, but you want to get into that market, browse Amazon, browse eBay, browse big industry stores. So for fishing, that might be Bass Pro Shop or whatever. Um, and see what kind of products are out there and see what kind of websites are ranking for them. If it's only big guys, then you might have a little bit of a problem. Um, but as you're doing your market research, if you find that sort of thing, let me know and we can look at it. Maybe you're missing something or I can try to help you out and we can come up with a different strategy. But we certainly want to feel confident that we can write about the products for whatever market it is um, and be able to bring in some traffic. Know what I mean? Yep, I got you. Okay. So the tip here is don't just look for physical products. You can check ClickBank for digital products as well. Um, the ClickBank Marketplace. If you just go to clickbank.com and click Marketplace, you can browse every product on there. So super cool, super easy. It'll give you one more thing to promote. It'll give you another opportunity for possibly creating your own digital information type product. Um, so that's just another one of those things that can raise the ceiling of potential on your site. And I think we're ready for the week one assignment. Dun, dun, dun. Week one assignment is find five good markets. Um, so I'm going to give you a spreadsheet. What I would like to see by this time next week is five potential markets. And for each market to have five model sites that have both low DA and high traffic. Does that make sense? So all of that might be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, I know it would have been for me. It was for me when I first started. But do you have any questions? Do you have any general thoughts? Um, I'm just really, really ready to get started. Yeah. Do you have any ideas for markets? You don't have to say anything specific if you're afraid of people stealing it. But do you think you're going to try to do something for one of your current hobbies or maybe start a, something new? Uh, you know... I had some ideas before, but now that we've kind of gone through some of your criteria and the process, I'm kind of wondering if it's best to start from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Scared you off it, huh? Yeah, definitely. But that's good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with my shaving blog, I honestly don't even like shaving. Like I, like I thought it would be cool and I started writing about it uh, bought a safety razor and I just didn't like it at all <laughs> like I cut myself and like I don't like having a smooth face so um, 
yeah, I started from scratch, and that site worked out really, really well, and it actually was really fun to um, write about, but the site I'm doing now definitely is a passion of mine because it has to do with my life, and it's super fun, but it doesn't have to be either, um, and you don't have to like whatever you do. Um, I know for a lot of people, SEO is the fun, so like doing the actual internet marketing is the fun part, and it doesn't particularly matter what the sites are about, but having something or like writing about something you're interested in is certainly a good place to start yeah well i'll definitely get some good markets to get to next week but i'm my mind is already thinking so good cool all right well i think that wraps up our first coaching call maybe the only thing left is to say merry christmas you guys i hope you are out there drinking eggnog and doing your own market research if you're following along with us maybe you're following along with jake and spencer who knows um but anyway good luck best of luck and we'll see you next time don't drink eggnog and drive don't drink eggnog and drive thank you very much (laughs) all right bye guys